All right, well, we are at Goodwill today about to do some thrifting. The last time we were here, the last two times we were here, we filled our cart completely full. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic today. I'm thinking we're gonna find some, at least a few things that we can flip for a profit. So here we go. Let's go see what we can find. All right, so I know you guys have very mixed feelings about the voiceovers, but today is going to be a voiceover between the loud music and the child that was screaming for the entire video, I just, I had to give you guys a voiceover. So I'm gonna spare you all of that, and I'm just gonna talk about what I'm seeing here on the shelves. So, of course, the first area that I always look at here at this Goodwill is the baskets. Um, unfortunately, this time there really aren't any spectacular baskets. I usually skip the blue. I have no real reasoning why, but I usually take a quick left <laughs> And I usually go down the wood section here, um, but of course this catches my eye over here and it is a little trinket box with birds on it. I realize quite quickly it's modern and I checked this out and I'm not really sure what it is, but it looked like a pig and it was cute. I decided to pass on it. So I start down the brown wood section. I spot this mug that looks otagiri, but since it's just a single mug, I decided to pass on it. Granted, otagiri usually does you know between eight and twelve dollars for a single if it's a good one but I just I couldn't I I don't know I just decided to pass we've got a nice little jewelry box there a vintage jewelry box but it's got some condition issues I'm trying to give you guys both sides of the shelves here this is interesting this is a dough man actually I have no idea but it looks like a dough man with a flower in his hand He's, he's quite the sculpture, but I decided to pass on him. Over here, we've got a vase. Somebody asked me the difference between a vase and a vase. I just sometimes decide to say it differently. That's really my take on the matter. I'm sure there, there's a much more professional difference, but that's my difference. We've got a little teapot here that I slowed down for and I decided to see made in Japan. What is the price? $2.99. I decided to pass on. Trying to follow the arrows as best I can. But the Goodwill is very super, super crowded today and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, my anxiety is high filming this video. But I'm trying my best. So that piece right there was wooden, but I like the hand-painted ducks on this. I'm kind of going back and forth between the two. Uh, this piece, I look at the back, and because of the back, I determined that it's probably a souvenir piece, and obviously there were some condition issues, so I passed on it. Over here on this side, that piece right there, that glass console bowl, is Jeanette, and the flash is really bad on it. I know I didn't really take a close look at it, but I've seen it there before. I know some of you may have wanted to point it out in the comments, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time. It's been there a while, and I know there's something wrong with it. <laughs> and I got to peek in the bins a little bit. So we've got a little powder dish back here. I like the lid, but I'm just, they don't sell very well. Not a single like that. You really need a vanity set for it to sell well, so I pass on that. Over here, of course I'm reaching. I've got a bookend and it has got a giraffe carved onto it but of course he's missing his little ears so I have to pass on that what do we have up here oh oh it is a compote of some sort I assume that it would have had a lid and because it does not have the lid I decided to leave it behind now this piece is interesting you don't see me pick these up very often because this is modern it has a made in China sticker on it but I just really love the applied flower and there, I just, I love the color contrast. I like the yellow contrasted with the purple. There's something about it that I like. Even though it has a modern Made in China sticker on it, I decide to buy it. 
which I know you all, I just blew all of your minds and you, you don't know what to think now, but I did. I decided to pick that up just because all the petals were there and it was nice. We've got a little Lennox piece. It's just a little, um, it's for a tea light. I think I've bought enough Lennox to last me forever. I don't really need it. Well, nice little piece of stained glass. So recently I bought a piece of stained glass that I'm keeping for myself, but this is just the right size that it's okay to ship and I decide to grab that piece. I really like this. It kind of reminds me of my great aunt. Um, she used to paint pieces like this and it just kind of reminded me of her. So I took a moment to admire it, but I decided not to buy it. Unfortunately, this little guy had lost his ear. Got a nice little skeleton piece down there, but I didn't investigate further. Over here, I glance real quickly at the purses. You can see it's just kind of a jumble, um, but I mean, that one kind of caught my eye, I guess. It's really a whole lot to take in, and for somebody who doesn't really specialize in purses, I mean, that one's got beads on it, but when I got closer, I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming for me. I've never done a whole lot with handbags. I just buy what I like, as I've stated in many videos. Here we've got a nice little stack of plates, but eh, and that is a little swank jewelry box, probably for cufflinks, but it was in really rough shape. Those kind of looked like Fitz and Floyd, and I turned them over and they were season something or other. They're very, they, they fooled me. I honestly thought I was going to find Fitz and Floyd on the back, and I was very surprised that they were not Fitz and Floyd. This piece right here, I'm not sure exactly what this is. It was very, very heavy brass. And I was looking on the bottom to see if there was any maker's mark on the bottom, but there was not. This piece I've actually picked up before. And it's the same as it was the last time. Of course I spot this really nice bowl. I really like this bowl and I believe it's slip decorated, but I'm not positive on that. Andrew would have to confirm that. He's the expert on the pottery slip decorated stuff. But I really, really liked that bowl, so I decided to grab it. This piece right here has me stumped because I'm not sure if this is modern or if it's actually vintage. It reminds me of Czech glass, some of the Czech glass I've seen, but I just don't know. So if you know, please leave it in the comments. Um, this mug right here, I liked the design on it. I put it back now, but I actually came back for it later and I don't think I filmed it, um, but I did end up picking up that mug. And we've got Thimbleville. Andrew was really excited when I showed him that he actually wanted it. And I'm like, no, I have to list it. It's Thimbleville. Somebody's going to want it. <laughs> so it's just for a thimble collection. But I thought it was neat. As somebody who, who metal detects and I actually dig up thimbles, I thought it was really cool. And he's like, I've, I've dug enough thimbles. I could fill that. He was, he was quite excited, I must, I must tell you. <laughs> That was just an art pottery piece. Um, it was not all that impressive. 
there's a planter on the end there. Those will typically sell between eight and fifteen dollars, just the regular style run-of-the-mill green planters. So that's why I didn't grab that, in case you were wondering. I really liked these plates. They clearly had some age because of the crazing on them. I turned them over. They said Ivo Glow. I'd never seen that mark before, but I could see there there was a chip on the top one, and so it just really wasn't worth it to me. I liked this fused glass, but again, I decided to pass on that. That teapot was missing its lid. Those goblets were okay. They just weren't amazing. We've got this piece down here. I'm pretty sure it's Pioneer Woman. I had to turn it over to see if it was, and there was nothing on the bottom. This piece I thought was interesting. It was like a shadow box and it had like yarn flowers in it and that was it. There wasn't a whole lot in the way of art. It was mostly just generic artwork. We've got a tree topper here with feathers and whatnot. Unfortunately, my tree is too tall and it touches the ceiling, so I cannot have a tree topper. That was a miscalculation on my part. And here, oh, I realized that the arrow was pointing the wrong direction and I diverted away. And now we're stuck in a traffic jam. <laughs> okay, so we've got an egg here. I like the design on it. It had a bird on it, yes. But it really was not up to par, so I had to leave it behind. The birdhouse I liked. It had a modern sticker on it, and it just just said birdhouse so I don't think it was anything special it was just the birdhouse there's a lot in the way of clear glass and it's a little bit overwhelming So this piece back here I found interesting because I always thought that it was Fenton, Dusty Rose. However, I'm going to show you something. Here it has a sticker, if it ever focuses, that says Made in Mexico. So I'm just so confused right now because this is the same Goodwill where I found the Empoli bowl that also had a sticker that said made in Mexico. So maybe they're just in the back sticking made in Mexico stickers on everything to just throw everybody off. I don't know. Because I swear that that shade was Fenton and I just don't know. I'm questioning everything. That one right there looks like it could be older than the other ones in the box. It kind of looks like Perry and Ware, but I couldn't get it out of the tape and it really wasn't worth it to me, so I abandoned it. We've got a few butter pats here for our cart, and then, oh, will you look at this? We've got a rose medallion candlestick. Unfortunately, it's a single. And then, to top it all off, we've got another bowl to match the bowl that we had in the red section. So that was kind of a nice little jaunt down this random aisle. Uh, they are in the process of restocking as we're there, and I think those were probably added after the fact. Or, you know, actually, we totally skipped this aisle. That's what happened. We skipped this aisle. 
they were probably there the whole time. Now this has a modern mark on the bottom. You can see porcelain blank. Um, I think it said, what did it say? Let me go back. It says porcelain blank made in China, hand painted in Hong Kong. Um, so it, it's probably actually vintage. It's probably a vintage piece. Now we're finally here in the blue section. The one that I normally skip. I, I guess I have an aversion to blue. I don't know why. We got a little maiden here with flowers. She's probably a Holland mold or, or something of the like piece that a hobbyist painted. Oh, and look at that. I've already skipped to a different aisle. <laughs> oh, yeah. The blue aisle. This little piece was cute, but uh, it was just a single little dish, and so I decided to leave it behind. These were kind of nice. I, I just wanted to point out the fact that they're using scotch tape, which I like because the last time we got something here, it was actually wrapped in, in the typical uh, packing tape, and it ruined the piece. And so I really just wanted to point out that they were using scotch tape on those plates right there and I, I felt like that was admirable and uh, needed to be mentioned. <laughs> so I'm always checking the china here at this Goodwill because I did get those Royal Dalton cream soup cups the last time I was here and so I make a point to check the china just to see what the markings are on the bottom. Hello. Look at you hiding back there. These are blue birds of happiness. They are art glass. I believe they were popular in the 1990s. Um, this one was marked 1996 by Leo Ward. And they are just adorable. I love blue birds of happiness. They make me happy. They don't sell for a whole lot of money, but if you can get them cheap enough, you can flip a profit. So I always pick up the blue birds of happiness. Um, occasionally I give them to my kids, occasionally I sell them. Um, that pair right there, I will more than likely be selling. Hello, Ray Dunn. I see you from behind. <laughs> We've got a bunny right here. I noticed the lettering on the back, obviously. It says hop, and it is marked Ray Dunn. Um, I don't know if this is a rare piece. I'm not an expert on Ray Dunn, but you know, the Ray Dunn that I buy that doesn't sell very well that I think, oh, maybe I can make money on this, I end up keeping for myself. So I think he's cute, and if he ends up not being a piece that's valuable, I'll keep him for myself because I, I happen to like Ray Dunn. I know a lot of people don't see the appeal, but I like it, so I'll keep it. Now this piece right here is interesting. This is a Jeanette piece with the original sticker. So this is not something I'm buying. I just wanted to point out that, hey, look at this. It's got the original sticker. And you can see the flash. You can see how the flash has been affected by the age and it's just really worn. I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm obviously moving stuff around. I'm checking out this Apple checkerboard in the background. <laughs> You can tell they're restocking because I'm just wandering aimlessly through the aisles repeatedly over and over and over again. But I'm still finding stuff, so I guess that's what matters. <laughs> oh, here we go. I found something else. This is Salt Marsh Pottery from Dartmouth, Massachusetts. And you guys know I'm originally from New England. My mom used to have so much of this Salt Marsh Pottery, so I know exactly what it is. And um, this obviously has a fern on it. A lot of it has flowers on it. I just always buy it when I find it. Then I spot this little guy. He is just a little metal cat. He's just as great. Both pieces go in my cart. Yeah, we're having a good day. Look at all of this stuff in our cart. I didn't think I was going to find anything else, but I'm talking about how a lot of people, usually if they have one piece of salt marsh pottery, they have more. So I'm thinking that if I continue looking on the shelves, I'm going to find 
another piece of salt marsh pottery. So let's get to it. Oh wait, no, here's sand dollar art. Um, <laughs> this is a sand dollar art piece. Somebody used sand dollars to make a tree and then they have birds and they've got like a little sand dollar sun. When I was a kid, we used to, um, we used to have sand dollars. I don't know if we actually used to dry them out. I used to just catch them and then set them back free. But I know that if they were to dry out, you could open them and you could get those little bird looking things out of the sand dollars. There's a little bell there. Right now I'm on the hunt for more salt marsh pottery. That is what I am looking for right now. That is why I'm in the green section. I'm thinking ferns are green. There might be salt marsh pottery here in the green section. We're gonna look a little harder and we're gonna find some. It's here. Look, it's down there. Or maybe it's over here or not. Oh, look at this little trinket box. I like trinket boxes. I usually do pretty well with trinket boxes. And if you can get them for the right price, they're good to have as filler in a store, so I grab them. This one, obviously, it's got florals on it. It reminds me of salt marsh pottery, however, it is not. No salt marsh pottery down there. I'm about to give up. Look at this cute little box. It's got Pooh Bear on it. Um, I brought it home and Juliet has already laid claim to it, so. <laughs> I thought it was really adorable. I was surprised that there were no markings on it, no signatures, no anything, um, just because it had on it. And it was pretty cute. So Juliet was like, this is a cute little basket. Can I have it? And I said, um, sure, why not? <laughs> that piece right there looks like it was begging to be painted by somebody and never got painted. Got a little creamer there. I feel like somewhere in the store I saw a sugar to go with it, but I, I don't remember where. I'm getting desperate at this point. And here we've got a basket. <laughs> I've given up. Um, and now I'm onto a basket. So I found this basket and we're kind of working on the back room of the store right now. And we're gonna have an area in the back for the kids. And I'm thinking this would be perfect storage for their toys, whatever toys they bring over to the shop. This would be perfect storage. Unfortunately, it's full of like, little caterpillar nest or spider nest so I've really got some cleaning to do to clean it out even Andrew was like this is gross and I'm like well I can clean it um, <laughs> but I end up grabbing the basket for $20 for myself for personal use I felt like $20 was a good price on it so it ended up coming home with me All right, so our total spend here at the Goodwill today was $57. And that includes the giant box that I will probably utilize at the store. We're setting up an area for the kids and they have a tendency to leave clutter. So I figured we can kind of use that to catch all the toys and the clutter. Um, so we'll take $20 off of the 57 and we'll say that it was 37 for retail, res resale. <laughs> so I think we did all right. I'm, I'm feeling good about the pieces we got. I'm really excited about the salt marsh pottery. I don't come across it very often, but I, I like what I do because it sells pretty well. So that being said, uh, I'm gonna end this video here. I'm going to head off to another Goodwill and you guys will see that video tomorrow. So I will see you then, later. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.